Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, so it's obviously a sad day. Uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine, so my thoughts and prayers are with the people of Ukraine. I hope they can um, obviously weather the storm that they are facing and hopefully they can win and get Russia out of their country. Um, so my thoughts are with them. Uh, I hope you guys are safe and everything, so I'll just leave it at that. Um, but one of the things that I noticed over the past week or so also is a lot of stuff on Twitter has been going towards, you know, not your own keys, not your crypto, how to get your coins off the exchanges um, because of things that are going in Canada and things like that. So we'll I'll take, hmm, can't speak. I'll talk about uh, some of the crypto devices you can use, hardware wallets. I'll also provide you my thoughts on them and what I actually use uh, to store my Bitcoin, Ethereum, and my other coins as well. So we'll take a look at that. We'll look at the miners. We'll look at Bitcoin, see what's going on. It a, was a weird day in the markets. Obviously, the markets were down in the morning, and then they came back up in the <clears throat> afternoon. Um, and the same thing happened with the miners and with Bitcoin. So let's get into it. But as always, not financial advice uh, for entertainment only. Do your own research. Don't fall for scams. Spam posts get reported and deleted. So let's take a look, take a look at the miners here, and then we'll take a look at some uh, uh, hardware wallets. So Ethereum... Uh, not Ethereum, but Argo was obviously <laughs> way down to start out the day. So was everybody else, and they actually finished up in the in the green. So Argo was actually up 6.51% on the day to uh, 90 cents. We can see Bitfarms was up 10.78% on the day to $3.39. CleanSpark was at up 12.72% to $9.48. I mean, we, we see it all, the pattern just repeating, starting out really low, and then, you know, going gangbusters towards the end of the day. Cores was up 7.53% to $8.43. Digihost was up 4.58% to $2.97. DMG was um, actually down 1.31% on the day to $0.42. Cents. Hive was up 7.82% to $1.93. Hut was up 5.94% to $5.71. Iris Energy was up 3.51% to $13.86. Mara was up 9.31 percent to 22.96. Mawson was up 4.53 to $3.69, and then Riot was up 7.83 percent to $16.25, and Annie Sphere 3D was up 2.29 percent on the day to $2.23. So, wild day on the markets. Obviously, a lot of stuff going on with Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, we know that we've got sanctions on them. So we'll see how this is all going to play out. But obviously, we can see here, Bitcoin was just on the news last night. Uh, when the news came out that Russia was invading, basically, Ukraine, we saw everything just drop dr drastically. And then in the morning hours and then into the afternoon and evening, we climbed out of that hole. And actually had a pretty good day on uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So Bitcoin right now is at 38368 and we are above our uh, resistance here at 37,500. We'll see if, how this goes forward. We're on the one hour chart right now. If we go to the daily chart on it, we can see that our size is still relatively okay. We are obviously between our resistance here at 40,700 and now our support at 37,500. And we'll have, just have to see how this all plays out in the next couple of days, weeks. Um, we may be bouncing off of this a little bit uh, for a while, depending on, obviously, what happens um, in Europe. So that'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Ethereum is up today also. It was at uh, $2,608. And it is obviously below the 20-day moving average here. But obviously, I mean, look at this candle wick. We obviously had it on the daily chart for today. It was just way down. It was down to 2300 and topped at 2,744 or so, and that was up. I mean, you could say the same thing about Bitcoin here as well. Uh, Bitcoin went all the way down to 34,324, and it went up as high as 39,700. Yeah, 39,700. So definitely a wild day in the markets. So let's take a look at um, the chart here on Bitcoin for the hash rate, and this is this one is showing us a, possibly the most recent data that we have on them, which is for today. Um, so right now, hash rate has gone back up to 213 million. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. Obviously, we're seeing this trend continue going up. All right. So here is the story that you know Canada's trying to seize Bitcoin wallets. Um, so Bitcoin wallets rejects uh, Canada's court's demand to freeze funds, citing technical impossibilities. 
And here's the story. So truckers protesting against COVID-19 restrictions in Ottawa over the last couple of weeks has resulted in numerous demonstrators having their bank accounts frozen, as well as Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoking the Emergencies Act to include crypto transactions. As the Canadian government ramps up its effort to derail the flow of funds to the de demonstrators, the Ontario Court of Justice sent uh, Nunchuck, its self-custodial -cust Bitcoin wallet, uh, a Marva... Marve injunction, ordering it to freeze and disclose information about the assets involved in the Freedom Convoy 2022 campaign. In an official response to the Ontario Supreme Court of Justice, Nunchuck replied that it is a self-custodial collaborative multi-sig Bitcoin wallet and that it is a software provider and not a custodial financial, financial intermediary. Um, so let's take a look at what they actually replied here. And this is just, uh, you know, this is genius on their part. So um, this is what they said. To the order, dear the Ontario Supreme Court of Justice, Nunchuck is a self-custodial collaborative multi-sig Bitcoin wallet. We are a software provider, not a custodial financial intermediary. Our software is free to use. It allows people to eliminate single point of failures and store Bitcoin in the safest way possible while preserving privacy. We do not collect any user identification information beyond the email address. We also do not hold any keys. Therefore, we cannot freeze our users' assets. We cannot prevent them from going from being moved. We do not have knowledge of existence, nature, value, and location of our users' assets. This is by design. Please look up how self-custody and private keys work. When the Canadian dollar becomes worthless, we will be here to serve you too. Sincerely, the Nunchuck team. So this brings up, obviously, an important point. If you don't have your own keys, your own wallet, and it's on exchange or something like that, if anything happens, for whatever reason, countries decide to ban it, whatever, um, they want to go after the assets or something like that. Your coins are going to be gone, held, whatever you want to call it. Hackers can get them as well. So and obviously we want to interact with exchanges to buy coins and things like that. But after that, once you buy them and then you're not trading them, take them off the exchange, put them on your hardware wallet. And we'll get into obviously a couple of hardware wallets here uh, to discuss the importance of it and obviously the benefits of it as well. So let's take a look at some of the ones here. This is an update here from Chicago Tribune. This was updated in uh, just this, mo this month, February 2022, and they obviously list um, Trezor uh, Model T, the best of the best, um, and they obviously have the Ledger Nano S, which is the best bank for the buck, and this is the one I actually use. I actually have two of them, and then they got the tre uh, Trezor One One Hardware Wallet, um, Keep Keep Key Hardware Wallet, and Cool Wallet S Wireless Bluetooth Hardware Wallet. I would stay away from Bluetooth wallets. Um, you know, Bluetooth can be hacked. Uh, but here's what they're saying, obviously. So we're going to cover the top two here to go over those. Uh, I've heard other people using Tre uh, Trezor, and they've had really good success with them, and I like them. And I've also got a bunch of friends of mine that use the Legend NOS, and they love that one as, as well. So I use that one. I love it. Never has failed me yet. So here's the bottom line, uh, customer favorite, it's premium password and uh, cryptocurrency protection and easy to use interface are premium features offered by this trusted model. And for the Ledger, portable convenience, this miniature hardware wallet is an affordable way to store a handful of cryptocurrencies offline in a secret spot. Uh, so the pros are compact, vivid and bright touchscreen, simple setup, durable design, supports over 1200 cryptocurrencies, features a 12 word recovery password to recover lost data. and then. Uh, supports over 1,250 cryptocurrencies secured with an eight-digit PIN, inexpensive, convenient companion uh, app, simple setup, LCD displays, uh, slim, tiny. And this one also has a 12-word recovery password, which they didn't mention here, but it does also come with that. You have to actually write it down when you set it up, uh, the 12 words, and then you actually have to put it in, put it in there when you set up, uh, uh, if you have another wallet, hardware wallet, you get, you have to put it in there if you want to keep the same one or... You know, obviously you got multiple uh, 12 password recovery phrases. Also, keep a copy, uh, you know, in a secure place. Keep another copy uh, off-site someplace, ideally. Cons for these are not every token is compatible, but more are being added regularly. And its only drawback is its relatively small memory. And that is why I have two, because I could only get like three coins or three to four coins on each one. Um, so... And I do have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Uh, I did have, what else do I have? Uh, Doge on there. And I got a couple other ones that you know, are just like $100 or something like that. So that's why I have two of those. So here's how they decided. Um, we purchase every product we review with our own funds. We never accept anything from product manufacturers. 
So 30 miles were considered. They spent eight hours researching, uh, two expert interviews, and 210 consumer consulted. So a buying guide, best hardware wallets, um, enter hardware wallets, which are physical, electronic. Let me see if I can zoom this in for you guys. Okay. There we go. So enter hardware wallets, which are physical, electronic, handheld storage devices that contain a user's personal cryptocurrency private key, also known as cold storage. Hardware wallets resemble external hard drives or a thumb drive. The information on the device is the private key that allows users access to their funds, and that key is often protected by a PIN or passcode. So this is the... This is an important part here, right? So this is where you actually have the private key, not the exchange or another provider or something like that. You have that physical, it's not physical, but it's a digital physical form of that private key. This keeps you obviously secure and in your possession. So it prevents you from being hacked and losing your money or the government wants to take it. Uh, when your cryptocurrency is in your hardware wallet, it's no longer in an offline realm or online realm, which means it's safe from being stolen or tampered with. In fact, hardware wallets are the most secure way to store cryptocurrencies, and that is true. If you have it in your possession, you have it at home, wherever, put it in a safe, whatever, um, nobody can get access to your coins without the knowledge of your PIN or the 12-word uh, passphrase, basically. Um, so this is the best way to store it, especially if you have a lot. I would say if you have more than $10,000 in cryptocurrencies, you definitely need one. Um, less than that, I mean, it's your choice, but I would, I would still recommend it. But, you know, if you're okay with losing $10,000, well, then you don't really need one. Uh, so the benefits, hardware wallets are removed from online storage and the interconnected web, meaning they are not su susceptible to hackers or malware. malware. They cannot be in infiltrated as they are not logged onto any network. Hardware wallets are offline storage. They have to be physically stolen to be compromised, and even in that case, a code would likely be needed to access information stored within it. In case of theft, most models have effective backup protocols to restore the personal data on another device. That's where you come in with those 12 password phrases. So the risks, obviously there's some risk. It's important to purchase hardware wallets from reputable, tested, and trusted companies. Any software or hardware bugs in the wallet can make it susceptible to hackers. Similarly, a flawed random number generator, which creates the private key, will allow hackers to spot patterns and break through the security. There is always a concern that less trustworthy company or individuals could create a flaw in the security to give them access to your cryptocurrency. Still, there have been no major breaches or of hardware wallets reported. And that's the important part. Uh, right, go with reputable sources, uh, do your due diligence on it, make sure when you get the package that it's not opened and or tempered somehow. Um, and just be careful with what you're choosing. So. The important part is that they have never been, uh, at least reported, that they have been hacked. Uh, cryptocurrency, so you can hold a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Like they said, 12, over 1,200 coins. Uh, amount of currency, so hardware wallets are most often used by those who manage large sums. Those who use only a small amount may not need uh, the security of a hardware wallet. If you don't have a lot of cryptocurrency, you may also find that you don't want or need to take the currencies offline. So like I said, if you have you know 10,000 or more, I would highly recommend it. I would even go as low as maybe 5,000 or more. Uh, you know, it's, the devices don't cost that much, less than 100 bucks. Features, so recovery and restoration. In case of theft, many companies provide opportunities to send your cryptocurrency information and balances to a new device where it can be safely restored and returned to its rightful owner. The old device is made useless while the new one takes its place. These contingency processes are usually set up when you acquire your device. It's important to have a backup plan in case a wallet is stolen or lost. So that's also where the 12-word pass, uh, 12 passphrase comes to play. That is basically your recovery. If for some reason your hardware wallet gets broken, stolen, or anything like that, you get another one, use that passphrase, and you get your basically coins back. So that's a great feature of it as well. Pin protection, there may be similar feature, uh, fear that people are watching or recording you when unlocking your hardware wallet, as this is the only way to gain access. However, some higher end models come with sophisticated input systems that obscure prying eyes, scramble signals, and alter how the code is inputted. So with, I know for a fact, at least on the ledger, when you have it, when you're looking at it, um, there's two buttons on it to control it for the pin, and the numbers that are on the display are always mixed, they're random. So you have to figure out how many you know, taps go up or down on it. So even if somebody's watching you, they're gonna get different, um, basically number of clicks, so they can't figure out how many uh, 
they can't figure out the numbers based on the number of clicks because it's always random uh, generated. So that's a good feature on those. Uh, two-factor authentication. I don't use two-factor authentication with the Ledger. I'm not sure about the other ones, but it might be something that's uh, worthy to take a look at. Even if you're uh, primarily using cryptocurrencies online, hardware wallets can still be useful. Some of them provide two-factor authentication, which a secondary device such as a cell phone is used to verify authentication, uh, authentic authenticity. When logging into an online account, hardware wallets may provide this extra level of security to ensure that the person interacting with coins online is also who has access offline. Bluetooth, stay away from Bluetooth ones. Um, I just don't trust them. I think they can be hacked. They, uh, I'll stay away from them. Uh, display screen, while some wallets are simple USB drives, other features, uh, others feature displays that give the user necessary information. The display may be used to input your PIN or phrase, and they may allow confirmation of any transactions taking place, which is the case with the ledger. That's what it's used for. It shows you the actual wallet address that you're sending to or receiving to, and you have to verify it. And you have to obviously pick the uh, coin that you want to use. So hardware wallet prices, inexpensive for under 50 bucks. You can find a, s a selection of hardware wallets from the less popular companies. They may interact with a wide variety of cryptocurrencies and have Bluetooth capability. Stay away from them. Mid-range, you'll find a great many options between $50 and $100. These will come from trusted companies as well as up-and-coming hardware wallet manufacturers. Th these, uh, the devices in this range should be compatible with most of the commonly used cryptocurrencies. And, you know, this is a good place to start. Expensive ones above $100, you'll find the top devices from most popular companies. These will have all the features you need and will regularly be updated to include the new uh, currencies. These will may come with uh, touch screens and things like that, which are obviously not needed. You just need something that's going to be there to basically secure your coins. Uh, tips. So buy from reputable vendors, obviously. Um, do your research. Check the latest uh, updates on those. Get them updated regularly. Even if, you know, that's so here's an example. So let's say you have coins on there and you're hodling for the long term. Take that device out at least, I'd say every month, month and a half, two months, connect it to your computer, get it going. There's gonna be updates not only for the software that you're using on your computer, but also on the device itself. So that always takes a little time to get that updated, but you wanna be, st you wanna stay current with it as much as you can. Um, and then all EAL, EALSs aren't equal, so this was a new one to me. Evaluation Assurance Level, or EAL, so that's what it stands for. The higher the rating is not always that it gets, uh, that it's a better product, it's just it's been through more testing. Uh, and then be patient when shopping. The cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies can be arcane and complex, as can the hardware and software around it. Invest the time needed to research your hardware wallet options thoroughly. And the other piece of advice, there was something else I wanted to talk to you guys on this. Um, or something that I found out, and I'm drawing a blank right now, actually. Uh, it's having to do with the updates. Uh, geez, I can't think right now. It, it just went blank. I knew I wanted to talk to you guys about something, but it went blank. If it comes back to me, we'll discuss it. Um, let me see what else was there. I think that's, let me see if I can figure out what it was from that drew my attention, something I wanted to cover as well. Uh, I think, no, I can't think of it. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. If it comes back to me, I'll put it in the comments down below. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So use a hardware wallet if you have a lot. Uh, and, you know, it's worth spending that $50, $70, or $100 on one or two of those. You'll be much safer with it. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what I wanted to talk to you guys about, but it went blank. So we'll leave it at that. We'll take a look at how Bitcoin's doing really quick right now. And we'll call it a day. And it's going up a little bit. So Bitcoin is at 38,626. We'll see how tomorrow plays out. Oh, also, I was looking for uh, Intel's announcement at their conference they had yesterday. They were supposed to provide some information on their uh, BMZ2 chip. Didn't see, couldn't find anything on that. I looked everywhere today, yesterday on it. Nobody's reporting on it, so I don't know if that information has come out yet or not. Looking forward to hoping that they do do it or do provide some information on it. So if that comes out, I'll let you guys know. And that's it. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell. Helps me out tremendously. 
I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great evening. Until then.